This explosion triggered a real earthquake. This is a second Hiroshima you've never heard of. And this blob of light can completely destroy not only Earth, but the whole solar system in addition. From faraway parts of our planet to faraway corners of space, get ready to see the most powerful and terrifying explosions ever caught on camera. Accidental detonations are always unexpected and therefore one of the most devastating. Residents of this Mexican city of Tultepec have spent ages producing a thing without which we can't imagine any big celebration. No, unfortunately, that's not tequila. On December the 20th, 2016, at the San Pablito Market, a young seller left for lunch while the goods for sale kept lying under the sun. In any other other case, they would have just started to rot without causing a catastrophe. But the thing is, for the last 200 years, the people of Tultepec have been living off fireworks production. On that fateful day, around 300 tons of pyrotechnics went up all at once. 40 people died at the site and more than 80 got injured. The explosion was so massive that it completely leveled the entire market. It took two years to rebuild it. Local officials claim that after that fatal negligence, the sellers treat their goods and how they're stored with much greater care. But who can guarantee there'll never be another horrible firework tragedy in Tultepec? Residents of Lac Megantique, Canada didn't break a single safety rule and still were attacked by a fire monster. And that's not a figure of speech. On July the 6th, 2013, at around 1 a.m., the town suddenly heard a loud blast that sent a giant fireball sweeping through the streets. It was three times larger than the tallest central buildings, and its heat could be felt as far as two kilometers away. People were jumping from the windows, desperately trying to escape. But then the monster reached the town's sewers. Pillars of fire began erupting out of the storm drains, a really apocalyptic picture. Firefighters managed to get close to the disaster site only 20 hours later, and they had to replace each other every 15 minutes because of the heat and toxic fumes. When they finally defeated the fire monster, 47 locals were found killed, and the whole city center was practically destroyed. But what happened there? It turned out that, by some incredible consequence, the fire monster sprang to life because of a regular freight train. The lead locomotive had been having mechanical issues that had been just recently fixed. However, the maintenance team had used epoxy-like material that lacked the required durability. As a result, oil had begun to accumulate in the body of the centrifugal compressor, and that continued for seven months until it finally overheated. Any train is bound to catch fire in this case, but on top of that, on the night of July the 6th, the tank cars were carrying crude oil. Its release and explosion produced the giant fireball that disfigured the town of Lac Megantique just one month after the tragedy. The company that owned the rail line filed for bankruptcy. But sometimes, accidental explosions happen to be so massive that the people responsible for them don't get away so easily. In 2016, Chinese authorities arrested more than 50 Tianjin port executives and accused them of corruption and power abuse. Meanwhile, the local warehouse chief was sentenced to death. These are the consequences of human negligence that caused a real earthquake. Late in the evening of August the 12th, 2015, local emergency service received a call reporting a major fire that had occurred in one of the port warehouses. The 
the firefighters rushed to the scene immediately. However, it soon became clear that they were totally powerless. The fire area was way too huge, but the main and worst surprise was only about to happen. At 11.30 local time, two tremendous explosions rocked the port. Every living being within a kilometer died immediately, and the shockwave tore open windows and ceilings six kilometers away from the blast site. More than 200 people were killed. More than 12,000 cars were destroyed. China's National Earthquake Network even registered these explosions as magnitude 2.5 and magnitude 3 earthquakes. Their energy was equivalent to 27 tons of TNT, which is more than the explosive force of the Fat Man, the bomb that had been dropped on Nagasaki. All of this occurred because of containers with ammonium nitrate, a fertilizer heavily used in bread production. The investigation later revealed that the storage temperature in the warehouse had been a few tens of degrees over the acceptable limit, so this scandalous neglect finally led to their unavoidable detonation. The port of Tianjin was reconstructed in just six months. But then, five years later, a strikingly similar thing happened in Beirut, Lebanon. This time, an ammonia nitrate blast triggered a magnitude 3.5 earthquake. It killed at least 210 people and made homeless around 300,000 more. The subsequent protests forced Lebanon's government to resign. But if humans are careless enough to let such dreadful explosions happen, what are they capable of when they want to blow something up deliberately? Nuclear explosions are scarier and more devastating than any other bangs you can think of. On August the 6th, 1945, one of them destroyed the Japanese city of Hiroshima. The mushroom cloud rose to a height of 7 kilometers, which is just a bit lower than Mount Everest. 80,000 people died in an instant. Some of them disappeared without a trace and left only nuclear shadows, body silhouettes forever etched into the city surfaces. Three days later, the city of Nagasaki was bombed as well. That time, the mushroom cloud reached nine kilometers into the sky. The number of citizens who died from injuries and radiation sickness exceeded 140,000 people. These horrible explosions pushed Imperial Japan to surrender to the United States in the Second World War. However, Little Boy and Fat Man are actually ranked among low-yield nukes. Their explosive force was 15 and 21 kilotons of TNT respectively. Respectively. The next bomb generation was carrying megatons. These are thermonuclear devices where atomic explosives are needed to create a fission chain reaction in the second part of the bomb, which repeatedly increases its overall destructive power. American scientists chose to test this kind of weapon at a safe distance from their own territories. It went to Pacific atolls such as Aniwatak. Little did they know that the consequences would be much worse than expected. On November the 1st, 1952, the military detonated the first thermonuclear device created by the United States, Ivy Mike. It was probably genuinely frightening to watch 10 megatons released into the atmosphere. The mushroom cloud rose to 37 kilometers above the ground, which is four times higher than the cloud in Nagasaki or Mount Everest. The blast drowned one of the atolls while radioactive fall out spread over 56 kilometers around. The samples received after the explosion confirmed the existence of two new chemical elements, Einsteinium and Fermium. This result inspired the military and encouraged them to go on. But the next time, they made a grave mistake. The first test, codenamed Castle Bravo, was scheduled for March the 1st, 1954. Nobody could even imagine that an explosion in the middle of the vast ocean would be later dubbed a second Hiroshima. But why? The Castle Bravo nuclear device was supposed to be less powerful than the Ivy Mike bomb and have an explosive yield of fewer than 6 megatons. But 
the developers badly miscalculated. The blast was two and a half times more powerful and yielded 15 megatons of TNT. The mushroom cloud set a new absolute record, almost 45 kilometers high. And the fallout coming from ruined coral reefs chaotically traveled hundreds of kilometers around, far beyond the test site. It hit 23 crew members aboard the Daigo Fukuryu Maru, a Japanese tuna fishing boat. All of the fishermen suffered from acute radiation sickness, and one of them eventually died. That's why the Japanese press called the Castle Bravo test a second Hiroshima. The U.S. government had to pay the victims $15 million in compensation. However, American scientists not only continued with the nuclear tests, but also decided to detonate another bomb two months after the tragic event. The fact that the new device was similar to Castle Bravo in terms of its yield didn't stop anyone. And even though Castle Yankee turned out to be not so enormous and yielded only 13.5 megatons of TNT, it surprised its creators with other unexpected problems. Four days after the detonation, it began to rain radioactive fallout on some parts of North America. Mexico City was affected the most. Even though the capital lies 15,000 kilometers away from the test area, in the following years, local hospitals recorded a high incidence of cancer. Meanwhile, on the other side of the planet, the Soviet Union closely followed these advances and firmly decided to beat Americans in the nuclear arms race. On October the 30th, 1961, the USSR military forces conducted a test of the most powerful atomic weapon in history. Dropped on the Arctic island of Novaya Zemlya, it was named the Tsar Bomba and yielded 58 and a half megatons of explosive energy. That's like 70 fat man bombs going off above Nagasaki. Its mushroom cloud rose to an altitude of 67 kilometers. Detonations of Fat Man and Little Boy simply fade into the background. The cap of this devil's mushroom covered 7,000 square kilometers. This territory could easily fit Guangzhou, one of the biggest metropolitan areas of China. The Tsar Bomba explosion was visible even from Norway, Greenland, and Alaska, and the shockwave it produced circled the globe three times. That day fully proved the Soviet nuclear capacity and show that there's almost no upper limit to the violent power of such weapons. For this reason, despite the Cold War still raging, the world states with nukes in their possession soon agreed to ban most of these tests. But even the largest human-made explosions are nothing compared to what nature can come up with, or the universe to be exact. Some of the most breathtaking blasts happen pretty close to Earth, which is why our telescopes keep detecting them every now and then. Jupiter impresses sky watchers not only with its legendary Great Red Spot, but also by showing them traces of brutal space attacks. By pure luck, one of them was captured by Japanese astronomers in 2021. At first glance, this flash seems incredibly tiny. But don't forget that the diameter of Jupiter Jupiter is 11 times bigger than that of Earth, meaning that this little thing is nearly the size of our planet. Its temperature reached 8,000 degrees Celsius, which is hotter than the Sun's surface, and for a couple of seconds, the flash itself was 300 times brighter than our star. This memorable performance was delivered by an asteroid no more than 30 meters in diameter, a typical Monday on Jupiter. In 2000, in 2009, astronomers filmed a half-kilometer asteroid crashing into the planet. Nothing special, just an explosion equivalent to 5 billion tons of TNT. That's like 85 Tsar Bombas erupting at the same time. After this accident, scientists saw a new black spot the size of the Pacific Ocean that remained there for a very long time. If this asteroid had fallen in our actual Pacific Ocean, we'd have been swept away by mega tsunamis. It's about time to thank Jupiter for having these dangerous space rocks all to itself. Back in 1994, this gas giant already 
saved us from a real planet killer, Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9. Jupiter pulled the comet apart and didn't let it shower us with 22 fragments, with the largest of them being 2 kilometers in diameter. That's four times bigger than the asteroid spotted in 2009. Jupiter's atmosphere heated up to 30,000 degrees Celsius near the impact site. Only blue supergiants are known to have a temperature like this, and their radius is greater than the distance that Jupiter covers orbiting the Sun. What's more, the comet exploded with a flash, able to challenge the universe's brightest stars. For several months after the collision, we could see long, dark blotches in Jupiter's clouds. They lingered there, despite all the active atmospheric currents. And before you start typing your thanks to the brave camera guys for doing such a fantastic job, let's first learn their names. The most powerful explosions on Jupiter were captured by robotic space probes Galileo and Ulysses. But if flashes occurring on this planet can be more blinding than the Sun, what may happen on the Sun itself in case of a space explosion? On July the 14th, 2000, France, as always, was celebrating its main national holiday, Bastille Day. However, apart from bright fireworks, there was also an invisible explosion up in the skies, and it definitely spoiled the festive mood. The thing is, on the holiday eve, a giant sunspot spewed a cloud of magnetized plasma right towards Earth. When it hit our planet's magnetic field, it triggered a major geomagnetic storm. In turn, this sparked power blackouts around multiple regions of France, leaving citizens unable to check the latest news and at least find out what happened. Battery-powered receivers didn't help much, as that geomagnetic storm disrupted even radio signals. The number of heart attacks and strokes increased by 90% on that dreadful day. But if I if I were to pick someone or something that suffered from the solar storm on Bastille Day the most, that would be Japan's astronomy mission called Advanced Satellite for Cosmology and Astrophysics. Magnetic disturbance damaged the onboard control system, and scientists didn't notice the catastrophic changes before it was too late. As a result, the costly mission was sent tumbling into orbit. Then, three years later, the Sun decided to freak astronomers out and unleashed a storm right on Halloween's Eve. We still don't know how powerful these solar flares actually were, since the equipment supposed to give us this information stopped at the maximum possible value and broke down. We can roughly imagine the force of the eruptions if we consider how fast magnetized plasma jets traveled from the Sun to Earth. The way took them only 19 hours instead of the usual two or three days. Airports worldwide had to cancel hundreds of flights because of the geomagnetic storm. It also caused a system failure in Scandinavia, which led to widespread blackouts. Flows of charged particles significantly depleted our planet's ozone layer in the polar zones, and its recovery took eight months. But the worst thing is that during the Halloween storms of 2003, several hospitals reported a sudden rise in child deaths, and no one knows why. Scientists believe that a relatively large explosion on the Sun may be the end of our civilization that depends on electronics so very much. However, deep and distant space may throw an apocalypse for us at absolutely any moment. Scientists often detect massive explosions outside our solar system, and they're hardly similar to anything we know. These bursts can only be compared to the Big Bang that let the universe come into being. In 1604, German astronomer Johannes Kepler saw something extraordinary high in the skies. He saw a star in the constellation of Ophiuchus that hadn't been there before and carefully mapped it. Here it is, marked with the letter N. Kepler thought that he got lucky to witness the birth of a new bright star 
star, but pretty soon it faded out. Four centuries later, the Hubble Space Telescope captured only some peculiar clumps of matter in this part of the sky. The thing is, what Kepler saw wasn't a birth of a star, that was a disastrous death of an old one. When a massive blue giant runs out of fuel, it doesn't only vanish, it explodes with the brightness of billions of suns visible throughout space. But even though now we know what this phenomenon is, we keep calling these blasts novas and supernovas, just like Kepler did. In truth, people had been noticing interstellar cataclysms before it, and they didn't even have any telescopes. Scientists assume that this cave painting found in India dates back to 3600 BC and depicts nothing less than a supernova explosion. I'll tell you more, even the star of Bethlehem could be a supernova. This means that these space blasts might have influenced humankind's history, and they may also put a stop to it. If a supernova explodes in the Alpha Centauri star system located 4.2 light years away from Earth, that will be a splendid light show. In a matter of days, the shockwave will basically reduce our planet to ashes. That's like detonating the world's nuclear warhead stockpile a few hundred times in a row. Luckily for us, there are no dangerous stars ready to become supernovas near Earth so far. And yet, scientists occasionally detect such things in other galaxies. Over the last 20 years, Hubble captured five supernova explosions in a galaxy named NGC 5468 that lies 140 million light years away from Earth. The effects of the blast look impressive, even from such amazingly long distances. This bubble is several times larger than the solar system, but aesthetic pleasure is not the main reason why scientists keep filming supernovas. A remarkable explosion occurred on the outskirts of this galaxy 70 million light years away from us. A white dwarf had been absorbing a neighboring star's matter until fusion reactions appeared on its surface. The subsequent explosion ejected matter into space at around 18,000 kilometers per second. This is 90,000 times faster than the speed of our jet planes. A flash 5 billion times brighter than the sun struck the universe. And that's important. Type 1a supernovas like that always have roughly the same luminosity, which lets astronomers accurately measure distances in outer space and even calculate how fast the universe is expanding. In 2016, scientists first managed to record a unique and exotic consequence of a supernova explosion in the galaxy Centaurus A. This is the so-called light echo. Looks very similar to circles on water. Astronomer Luis Galbany suggests that such waves carry carbon, iron, and heavy elements around space at high speed. And don't forget that we owe our physical existence to these exact substances. But even the influence that supernovas have on the universe seems less profound when you learn about other space explosions. In 1967, U.S. military satellites were closely watching the flares emerging on the planet's surface as a result of Soviet nuclear tests. In quite unexpectedly, they picked up a signal coming from a surprising source, from space. That was a gamma ray burst, just a couple of pixels on the tape, but they were enough to render astronomers speechless. If Americans would have sent someone close to the source to record it, the footage would have revealed a collision of black holes or neutron stars that produce narrow emissions as bright as hundreds of supernovas. Experts witnessed one of the most powerful gamma ray bursts not so long ago, on October the 9th, 2022. And even though there are nearly two and a half billion light years separating Earth from the explosion site, it affected us anyway. Nitrogen molecules in the upper atmosphere started splitting into ions under the influence of gamma rays. At the same time, critical failures appeared in radio navigation systems. If this deadly ray had hit Earth from inside our galaxy, the outcome would have been pretty devastating. Paleontologists suspect that 450 million years ago, a gamma ray burst caused the late Ordovician mass extinction. That was when, for some unknown reasons, more than 85% of living species suddenly died out. Unfortunately, 
Unlike solar storms, there's no way to predict a lethal gamma-ray burst as it flashes through space at the speed of light. It may be that a frightening blast has already happened, and the consequences are currently on their way. And when they catch up with us, the half of Earth directly facing the blow would turn into one big photo film showing nothing except our imprinted shadows like those of Hiroshima. But while we're still alive, scientists are planning to watch one interstellar event live. Betelgeuse, a red supergiant, is about to turn into a supernova soon. By soon, I mean any moment in the next 100,000 years. A blink of an eye by the standards of astronomy. I'm not sure about you, but I would really want a picture of me standing against two suns shining in the background sky. That's exactly the effect Betelgeuse would bring once it becomes a supernova. And if we have to wait for another few thousand years, who knows? Maybe by that time, humans will find a way to send camera operators up there and get footage of space explosions. Would you like to get hired for this job?